it's definitely uh Leroy? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see if people find it now. It's always something. Always something. Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today's so Sunday where I sew on Sundays. Anyways, um sorry for that. If you're just finding this video, I had some struggles. Now mobile devices are forcing you to choose, but the option isn't on the main page. It wants you to do mobile in vertical position. That, that means up and down, giving you a long screen and you can't even see the comments or anything. And when the, the chat is up, then it becomes a little tiny picture at the top if you're watching from a mobile device, which is so retarded. So now you have to go and find the <coughs> under the settings that says to turn it uh, horizontal instead of vertical. Really, they should just automatically let the camera be whatever position you hold it in. If it, you turned it on in the horizontal position, it should automatically be horizontal. And no, YouTube is forever changing, making this more difficult for me because I struggle with technology. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that. Let's see who's all here. Well, as, as my, you might have to go get my computer. I tried welcome. I tried Teresa. Yeah, you're gonna have to go get my yeah, computer. Right. I'll say hi while you go get my computer. It's not working for the chat thing. All right, let's see who is here. Sorry guys for this confusion today. All right, Tracy, Nancy, Melena, Jacqueline, Judy, Linda, Toby, Diane, Laura, Carol, Diane, Florence, Susan, Donna, Paula, uh, Geraldine, Paula, Irish Sail Lady, Barb, Sharon, Beverly, Glenn, Miss Sobeka, uh, Danelle, Teresa, Kim, Candy, Tiffany. Oh, there's a Tiffany on here. Woohoo! Hey, friend name. <laughs> uh, Kathy B, Sharon, Lisa, Beatrix, Teresa Louise. Hello. All right, guys. Hello to everybody that I missed. I got to fix some computery stuff now on my computer because I'm, you know, you know, that's just how things work. On days like today, I think it's because I had one live stream scheduled and then canceled that out because it wouldn't flip the screen and it was trying to screencast my screen with all my information. Like, I, yeah, so I definitely had to turn that off and start a new one. I don't know what's going on with YouTube mobile, but let's just say it's driving me inside. Oh my goodness, come on. This completely logged me out too. <sighs> you know, hey, hey, that's all I gotta say about that. All right. Yep, it turned everything off. Why does it do that? I have no idea. Oh, okay, it should be working now. Yeah, it should thing. be working now. Yep. All right, so we are working on the always chasing rainbows pattern. If you guys didn't know, this is what it looks like. There is a download link. If you type explanation pattern, it will take you directly to the download. There's no website to go to. It just goes right to the download and you can download it. It's actually really simple. So last week I got all the half square triangles made. I put them in an order and then I stuck it all in a box and said, I'll finish more later. So now it's later this week and it's Sunday and it's time to work on it. And I have everything stacked, so I kind of really don't need to go by the pattern anymore. But I'll keep this page, you know, right here in front of me somewhere so that I can see what it is the heck that I am doing. So I just put it on my... <laughs> little thingy right there that holds paper and it can stay right in front of my face so that I don't mess anything up. But I shouldn't mess anything up because I stack it all nicely. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and in sets of two, run these through. So that means 
these two pieces will run through first and these two second and then the next two that will keep that whole entire row together but i'm just going to do the whole stack obviously and i'm going to take my number one i have a number one two three four five all the way to five so i have five rows so i'm going to take that number one and put it back on the first piece of every time i get to a clip because right now it's holding all of them put it on that first piece because if it's on that first piece i know that everything up to that number one is number one row everything up to the number two is the number two get where i'm going here so i'm just gonna remove the clip put it on the first piece only the rest of the clips i honestly don't need for that pile so those can just go out of the way <laughs> now, oh good? yeah you can close it now it's good all right so now i'm just going to put them right sides together and start running them through right, one right after the other right after the other with a quarter inch seam allowance and everything is stacked the way i need it so i shouldn't get anything out of order no why oh you go to visit her um no i do not <laughs> i used to have a bunch of these things so if you guys didn't know these little uh, paper things right here it's a paper paperweight <laughs> so it's not only a paper but it's a sand filled pink paperweight i've had this it's cracked and ruined i've had this since i was like 16 years old because i used to play music i used to play the clarinet so i would put my music on my paper paper holder paperweight <laughs> <laughs> and it would make it easy on me. So when I was digging through a box of stuff recently, I was like, oh, man, I haven't seen that in years. And I had like three of them. I had one in blue and one in green. <laughs> I don't know where the other two were, but I did find this one. <laughs> so, yeah, you might have to look it up online, Becca, because I haven't seen a, you know, paper weight paper holder since I was a teenager. <laughs> and I finally found it. I was like, oh, hey, look at that. So it's probably something that would need to be found online. We'll check the dollar. Tree. I'll check I'll check online or the Dollar Tree or something and see. But I've not like I said, I've never I haven't seen one since. Okay, come on. So all I'm doing now is just sewing these through one right after the other. They're already grouped. That made it so much easier when I stacked them last week towards the end of the video. So that way I can keep everything nicely and older. Nice order. That's what we want. It's a nice order of things. And I was working on other things and I may have to do bobbin soon. It's a good thing I rolled a bunch of bobbin. I literally have too many projects going at one time in here and I'm starting to get confused. Yes, you do. You have too many. I have too many things going on and I confusing a lot so that's the point one, right? Yep. So that means this is next. I don't remember if I'm on the top or the bottom. <laughs> I'm grabbing pieces and I'm like is it the upper one or the lower one? The upper one is dark green. The lower one is lighter green. <laughs> I forgot that they're like uh, radi. I did the colors in, in a radiating manner. So they go from and the rows are no, the rows the order of everything is going in the order of which the colors gradiate that's the word for it yes and with that fan on yeah that, little that paper is like, not staying the point there. <laughs> there's no point useless. <laughs> it's useless when the fan is on there it goes again oh there we go again <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I thought it would be helpful in here when I found it. It 
is a lot per row. I don't remember how many per row because I'm not looking at the pattern since it fell. <laughs> I could put a paper clip on it, but the whole thing is going to still fall. Oh, yeah. No, it's fine. Something happened here with the trimming of my half square triangles. These are supposed to be, what, four and a half inches? Okay, well, what happened to this one? Four and a half one way and not the other way. Well, you know, this is the part where I say, we just want to fudge things and make it work. Yeah, that's like a, almost a quarter of an inch. Right there, line that up right there. Let's see, I'll do the same now. Yes, yes, the same this way. No, I keep the fold open. Yeah. I was thinking it, but you commented it, so let's see if it works. Okay, I'm just trimming this piece up because it's a little on the wonky side. Now it matches that one, which is four and a half and four and a half. Okay, so I had some trimming issues last time. It's a good thing I see these things when I'm sewing because then I can fix them. All right, so if this was up and down, that means this one goes this way, right? If that one went with that one. All right, so this one goes this way. Oh, look at that, much better. Are they gonna be perfect? Uh, uh, nope, not at all. <laughs> Are they gonna work for me? Yeah. Probably because I trimmed all these with all those different rulers, honestly. I pulled out, remember I pulled out all the triangle rulers. Yeah. That's what happened. All right, so I'm going to put my number two on my first piece. Pull the rest of the clips off. I'm going to tie my hair back, though, because I'm getting sweaty already, and there's not even an iron on. It's just the a physical fact of working. <laughs> well, all the stress it took to get going. Plus, uh, yeah, the getting the live stream going was definitely stressing me yeah, out. It was a last minute ordeal. With... All right. And these ones are now facing yeah. downward. I'm lining these up. I have a clip at my top piece so that I know that that's going to be the start of my next row. Shall prevail. It's like I said, it's not a very hard pattern at all. It's actually quite easy. It's just half square triangles. I mean, anything with half square triangles is easy. At least in my brain. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else's, but at least in in my brain. It's a lot simpler. And there's so many things, they're so versatile. It's I think it's the number one versatile block. Is a half square triangle. They go into other blocks. They make blocks. They they create quilts just on their own, having only half square triangles. Like, you know. But technically, we're turning these into chevrons, which you do again with half square triangles. Both of these are 
the background and the main fabrics are batiks. So because of the waxy scent feeling to them, they're sticking to each other wrong and they're not easy to adjust. And there goes the need for a bobbin. See, I told you it was going to be needed quite called quickly. It. You called it. But I rolled three so that we'd have enough for today's video. Although there has been videos where I've gone through more than three bobbins <laughs> while sewing. <laughs> so we'll see how long it lasts. Come on. Oops. Okay, there we go. Was that a bottom or a top? That was the top. This is the bottom. Right? Sure. Whatever. I sure love chain piecing my projects. It makes it so much easier to keep everything together. Look at that. So this is already the end of row two. Pairing everything up. And we're gonna start on row three. It went quick. Look at that. All right, so again, I'm gonna put my clip on the first piece only. Remove the pins, pins, clips off of the next ones, and start with these. So we're on the next row. Oh, happy Canadian Thanksgiving. <laughs> Is there a special name for it? I forget. Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. Canada Canadian or... Thanksgiving. Oh, we're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna come cook for me? I'm hungry. I'm ready for a turkey turkey dinner. Do you guys have turkey dinners? <laughs> Yeah, that they were That's talking a, about making I mean, a Thanksgiving is a Thanksgiving, no matter what country they, it is. Uh, you have some kind of turkey, ham, whatever, you know, just have a dinner that everybody shares. I don't always do that. We have sometimes we'll we just do Marie Callender's, do pot, Marie pot, Callender's <laughs> pot pies because it's just me and Scott. So we don't need anything um, super fancy. Oh, Canada is called Harvest Dinner. Harvest Dinner, okay. 
All right, that's good to know. I should remember that because it's falling before Thanksgiving. <laughs> And this is when it's time to harvest your pumpkin to make pumpkin pie. Two more on this row, and then I need to get up and stretch my booty. I haven't been able to sit very long periods this last few days, so i am got to get up and move around frequently. It's probably because I've been overdoing things, and that's what Scott will say. Tip yes. me, you're overworking yourself. Slow down. Take a break. If you pay attention to the videos that come out during this week, then you'll know. I've been a busy little girl here. It doesn't seem like I've been as busy as usual, but I've been busy. Oh, leg stretching time. This reminds all of you to get up and stretch, although it hasn't been an hour, but we need to stretch, especially these lovely bad hips of ours. <laughs> That's because you've been working this whole time. You've been working before. You got yeah, I, I've been working all day today, actually. So I've been sewing all day. Uh, so I definitely, you know, been getting a lot of uh, sitting in, which is driving me nuts. I wonder if I could sit on one foot. Wow. I sew. Will it keep me at the pedal? <laughs> I'm sitting on my foot. But not on my bad one, because I still can't fold it under and sit on it, like, completely yet. I just have to adjust my back, honestly. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can do this while sitting on one foot. <laughs> Probably not. I'm already starting to feel like I'm going to fall. Off my tushy. As long as I don't pivot too much, then the chair should stay in this position. I definitely wish I had the money to go and buy hydraulics. That way I could just press a button right here under my desk and my whole entire heavy, heavy, heavy desk just lift up so that I can stand and sew. <laughs> but adding hydraulics to a desk would be a pretty penny. To this desk too, that weighs it. Hard. Yeah, because this desk would need some good hydraulics because it weighs a lot. This is a four people to move type of desk. Once it's in the spot it goes, that's where it stays. Any questions or anything that I can answer that you haven't got? We can answer. You guys have any questions or anything? It could be about this pattern. It could be about whatever quilty heart stuff your heart quilty desires. <laughs> I know. I'm so silly. But that's why you guys love me. Because I'm too funny. <laughs> <laughs> you guys could ask questions or something. I feel like I run out of things to talk about if you don't ask questions and, and talk to, you know, ask things that Scott can, you know, ask me. Since he started reading the chat, you know, I feel like all I do is so, you know, 
And I don't know what to come up with as a conversation because then I reveal too much for this week. You know, don't want to reveal too much. Have you ever sent your juke in for servicing or have you always serviced it yourself? Well, I have always serviced my old Juki, the other one of these, uh, Mr. Brokey, <laughs> myself. I always serviced it myself. But then I finally sent it in because I blew the motor after six years of using it. So I sent it in and the fixer shop didn't fix it properly. So I had to send it back to the fixer shop. And again, it came back another. So, uh, came back worse. Came back worse. So I decided to retire that machine. It still sews. It has nothing wrong with the sewing. But the needle keeps going up and down after you let your foot off of the pedal. So it's a little on the frustrating side because it'll stitch four or five more stitches with your foot off the pedal because the timing or something is out of whack. And I don't know how to fix that. So when I have company, they can use it and they can deal with it because most of my company sews slow sorry so company slow, it doesn't matter well no it does matter it's when you go slow it doesn't continue on it makes maybe one more stitch instead of five more stitches so now my company gets to use that one and this one is now my uh all the time use how do you keep the points even on the half square triangle i don't I don't keep the points equal on the half square triangles. They just happen however they happen. Um, these are all pressed to the dark, so I'm just like stacking them on top of each other uh, because there's no nesting happening because, again, they're all pressed to the dark. But there was no way to know which seam to press right, left, right, left, up, down, whatever, because you didn't know which way your pieces were going to be laying to begin with, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm just sewing and hoping they line up because, unfortunately, they're not really lining up. All right, I'm going to be on to the next row. Are you enjoying sewing other people's patterns? Um, I've always sewn other people's patterns, but I love to create my own. But uh, my audience, you guys out there, also like to see other patterns as well. So that's why I've been pulling in other people's patterns instead of just my own. Because I can only make up so much, obviously, on my own. And, you know, most of it's just verbal visual because I don't write the patterns. You know, maybe eventually someone will just message me and be like, Tiffany, I'll write all your patterns for you. Which videos do you want me to turn into a pattern? And then they just take all the measurements from that, you know, because I, I can't do it. You know what? My directions turn out to be like five pages of ramblings. <laughs> it's funny. How do you put the very large spool in front of the uh, Mine takes large spools. I don't know what you're, you're mean. I don't know. If Large. Say what machine. Maybe it's one of those sideways loading ones. And unfortunately, I used a separate thread spool stand when I sewed mine. When I sewed mine. When I used my brother machine. And now that I have my other Juki, the HCL F600 machine, I have not used a big spool on it yet. It has like a case that you put the spool in, you know? I don't think it even fits big cones in there. So if you don't fit big cones up somewhere on your machine, you need to get a separate, they sell separate thread stands specifically for, you know, whatever. But you don't even have to have a thread stand. Honestly, you can put your cone into a coffee cup down, you know, below the machine and then lift it up onto your thread uh, guide. That's the word for it. You just lift it up on your thread guide from down at a thing you know it all depends on the setup of your machine i'm not sure so how do you get your points spot on new to sewing and have difficulty getting my points right my points are never spot on my yeah, you're i have spot on most of the time with uh like nesting four patches together and stuff like that all that comes to you know putting the blocks together 
But when it comes to half square triangles and flying geese and all that, don't worry about it because we all struggle. I struggle. You guys see what you see on camera, but in real life, it is a lot different. Have you figured out when you and Eric are going to sew together? Uh, Eric and I have not had a chance to sew together, so we don't know when we're going to sew together. But we were hoping to be soon, but it's kind of good that it hasn't happened this year because I have been dealing with wedding stuff with my son and daughter-in-law. So uh, soon-to-be daughter-in-law, they get married on the 9th of next month, so pretty much a month away from tomorrow. And they will be hitched, and I will have a new daughter, and... All will be great in life. <laughs> but yeah, I've been working on wedding stuff, so I've been kind of overwhelmed. I haven't even started on their quilt, guys. I really want to make them a quilt, and uh, I haven't even started. I've had months, I've had months knowing that they're getting married, and I still have yet to start on their quilt. I was waiting for this and waiting for that and wanted to do this and wanted to do that, and I never got to it. So there's that. <laughs> But I did tell the I did tell the kids. I said, if you guys don't get your quilt by your wedding, it'll be your first year anniversary wedding gift. <laughs> what company do you think writes the easiest patterns to read and follow? Um, I find cozy quilt patterns are really easy to follow, and I also find those cards. Uh, they're like a postcard pattern. What are those? What's the name of that company? I know it. Somebody in the chat's going to know it and say it. But I, you guys know what I'm talking about, the ones that do know. Um, the pattern comes on a cardboard postcardy types thing, paper. And yeah, those are really easy to follow as well. They're like $3 or $4 for the patterns, which is really cool. And it all fits on one page. Any suggestions on hand tying a quilt? Um... I've never hand tied a quilt, so I don't know exactly, but Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics has an excellent tutorial that's like five years ago on uh, hand tying quilts. I watched it back then when it came out, and I was like, oh, I could do this, but I never did. I was like, that's easy, but I actually like the look of quilting, so... Because I started free motion quilting before I knew it was called free motion quilting. I was just moving my, you know, I even had the feed dogs up because my machine didn't have lowering feed dogs. So uh, I was free motion quilting by shoving my fabric in the directions I wanted it to go when I first started. Oh. All right, here we go. Every two gets separated now because every two is a block. Okay, so I'm just going to separate them now into sets of two. Like this and then sew those sets of twos together and then I'll have my whole row and I still have that pin the clip marked so here's one row right here that's row five right five yep and then the next one will be four and then three two one obviously you guys know how to count I'm hoping that this pattern, or the, you know, the chase of color um, radiates through this like I planned when I started thinking about my layout. So that's four. I have no idea when I'm going to quilt my Skulliver. Um, I want, I, I have looked online and Scott has looked online. We cannot find polyester variegated thread. I need polyester variegated thread because I want rainbow variegated thread. I did buy cotton variegated thread, but no matter how hard I struggled, tried, 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 tried. I spent, and I wasted almost a quarter of the spool already 
just trying to get the tension correct on my long arm, it does not like cotton thread. It just doesn't. So uh, I need a polyester spool of a rainbow variegated thread, which we cannot find any. So, and then I was starting to think, well, maybe they don't, polyester doesn't make variegated. I don't know, but all I know is I can't find it. So maybe they don't make it. I'm not sure. I mean, my embroidery machine has some variegated, but I think those are either rayon or something else. I don't know, but I wanted rainbow thread. So I might have to change my whole whatever color scheme for quilting skull over. How do you find the videos that you've done? How Mainly to, long arm she's talking about, but for any video. For any video to find it, you go to my main channel page. So if you close out the chat below this video, I don't have a, a, a device to show you, but if you're watching this video on your cell phone, close out the chat, it's going to disappear. And then you'll hit the picture of me and that goes to my actual page. My page, it'll say um, home, then it'll say videos, shorts, lives, playlists, community tab, and about me section. That's, you'll have all those in a row. And you click on whatever one you want. To come back to the chat, I finally figured it out that when it said chat has moved, it's now in the comments section, but you can actually, on a cell phone now, swipe over. So one way is the comments. And when you're watching the replay, if you swipe the comment box, over then it opens up the chat the live stream chat replay i finally figured that one out it took me all day the other day when i was online to figure out how to go back to it but yeah that's how it's done now but yeah you just go to my main page and that's how you find everything all the videos are there there's playlists if you want long arm quilting only there's playlists for long arm quilting only if you want to watch videos on so Sunday, all the So Sunday videos are in one playlist from way back when, <laughs> before the device was even good for filming and the videos were really horrible quality. But all you lovely folks still watched. It's amazing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're going to make sure that all these are being pressed a specific direction. Is your wood frame freestanding or is the frame bolted down? What frame? A wood frame. I don't have a wood frame for anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, me neither. Okay. If that is going to go to the left, then this one needs to go to the right. Okay. So all the top ones go to the right and all the bottom ones go to the left. I'm trying to pay attention to the pressing. which is very rare for me to do, but I'm doing it. You're saying glide thread is polyester and they have rainbow variegated? I have not seen a rainbow variegated glide. Well, I guess we should Harmony has variegated, but they don't have a rainbow one. And Harmony is a poly rep or cotton rep poly core. I will have to look again, but I've not seen the rainbow for the polyester. I've not seen any polyester yet. And if it comes down to it, for Sculliver, where did I put it? I thought it's somewhere right here. Aha. If it comes down to it, this Omni V is what I bought that will not run through my long arm. Then all I have to do is roll a bunch of bobbins, put this through this juki, and do sit down quilting on my juki with my rainbow variegated thread. Because I have some, remember I just said, but I brought it in here now because 
I can't use it out there. My machine does not like Omni. Go figure. It's picky. I think all machines are picky, but my long arm is picky. Very picky. Wall whack, I looked on wall whack. Uh, I don't have Isocord. I've not seen variegated in. I have a ton of Isocord for. I use it for the embroidery machine and for the long run. And I've not seen a variegated in Isocord. They probably make it. I just haven't seen it. Like I said, my embroidery threads. I have a. Uh, you know, I could run my embroidery threads and do every section in a color that matches. That's how much embroidery thread I have. I can do my Sculliver completely 100% um, custom and run every single color that I have to match each color on each spot. But that's a lot of work and that's not the work that I want to put on Sculliver because Sculliver has like... 50 bazillion thousand pieces. And I really don't want to quilt each piece individually. I know people do that, but I don't want to do that. I honestly don't know what I want to quilt on it. <laughs> That's why it's not quilted yet. I don't know what I want to quilt on it, and I don't have the thread. Because the thread I bought is not the right thread. thread you use important to the project? Is the thread I use important to the project? Well, yeah, it's what holds it together. I don't mean, I don't mean to be sound sarcastic about that, but it's probably wrote wrong. Maybe she means the color? The color is not important for most projects, except for a long arm quilting Sculliver. That's what's important. <laughs> I want rainbow variegated thread. Sculliver is, if you guys haven't watched the series, it is a very, very colorful rainbow of colors quilt. So I wanted a rainbow thread. I bought the Omni. My machine has ran some brands of cotton through it. But it definitely doesn't like Omni V. Mm -mm, nope, not at all. I realize all these blocks hook together, but it's not going to matter which way the seam goes because each block has a sash, or each row has a sashing between the blocks. So nothing is going to be nesting except for connecting the rows from top to bottom. So that's the only seam I need to worry about being right, left, right, left is the blocks. Glow-in-the-dark thread would be good on Sculliver. Yeah, and you know what? I have glow-in-the-dark thread. I actually have two spools of glow-in-the-dark thread because they don't come with very much on them. And I got them for the long arm, and I have yet to use them. And I've thought about it. I could quote Sculliver in glow-in-the-dark thread. That would be awesome. Problem being is nobody's going to see it because if I submit it to a quilt show like I want, uh, they won't turn the lights off just so that you can see the quilting on my quilt, you know, and the coolness of it. And I found that out because I black light quilted the with black light thread on my Cleopatra's fan and sent that off to a quilt show. But they're not going to turn all the lights off so that you could see my one quilt and see how awesome the quilting looks, you know, under the either glow in the dark, which still glow in the dark still works under black light and or black light thread. This 
It's going pretty quick, I think. What do you think, Scotty? Yeah. Am I supposed to write it or anything? Uh, no, I'm trying to keep it all in order, so I guess I'll just do it. <laughs> I don't want it out of order at all. I thought about it one row at a time, but it's fine. I got it. Once I get the rows pre uh, sewn together, then you can just press them like that, and then we won't get them out of order at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm ready to email you links to Blythe Randall and Ice Cream. Thank you. That's probably why my phone just vibrated. I love that you guys are on the hunt for me. All right, so it's been an hour into today's video. How about a fun auction while I'm sewing? If you guys have never been on while we have an auction, usually the price starts out at whatever amount and you guys can bid in $1, $5, whatever dollar increments. We are going to auction off something. And then you guys have fun, and then I call, you know, just like any auction, going once, going twice. Obviously, there's a delay in YouTube, but, you know, we kind of can tell when it's the end also. So, in two seconds, I'm going to have Scotty grab, and I'm going to tell you about it, and then um, we'll start that and let that run while I sew. No, just that. Looks fine. All right. So, I got to tell you about this project. Before you... Oh. When you told me to. You said you were going to tell me. You Before you start bidding, I'm not even going to show you. Before you start building, okay. The other day I posted a video which got so many emails from and comments asking if I'm selling it. I'm pretty sure you could tell what video now. <laughs> so I long arm quilted a panel. I mainly quilted that panel to show you how to quilt a panel, how to load the panel, which way is the best way to quilt it. During that quilting, I was not paying attention because I was filming it. I was not paying attention to my tension. Uh, so my bottom tension, it was good, not good, good, not good, good, not good during it. And when I filmed towards the end and I show you guys the front and the back of the quilt, I showed the back of the quilt. And that's when I noticed it because I wasn't looking the whole entire time. I noticed it, that the tension was off. So I went and plucked those threads out in some places. Some I just left them and stitched over. Uh, but I brought it in here after because it was already fully bound when I was mad and needed to fix it. I went back and loaded, you know, I put my free motion quilting foot on and restitched so much of this quilt. So just know that it does not look very pretty on the back side. That's a big note. It's not, I mean, it is, it looks fine. Obviously, nobody's going to see the back, but if you look at it closely, it's not very pretty. So. Starting at $10, we're going to do the Jack Skellington panel quilt, which is, I don't know by I don't know size because I never measured it. I totally forgot that part. Well, let's do that now. So it is just a wall hanging. Oh, the back of it is skulls and uh, purple, uh, what is that called? What is that called? Uh, spider spider webs. webs. There we go. 
39. It's 39 by... I can't tell if it's got the edge. 46. 39 by 46. I'm going to go ahead and just hang this up here on top in front of me flag. Just like this. And you guys can have fun with your bidding. Cause... Did you want to show them the, the twirly? Oh, yeah. Oh, so one of the... One of the twirlies in the top corner of I this. The camera over, they can't even see it. Oh. Well, the camera has to get hooked up. No, no, no. Don't, don't move anything. I'll just take the camera off the thing. Okay, but you can't see the top of the quilt. Yep. We're, we're going to come look at it. In... Camera's moving. This is the only one on the front that you can see got messed up when I restitched it. I used the same thread, too. So why is the... Good part, good, and not the other part, but whatever. That's the only part on the front. So you can see it has swirlies. I stitched around all of this on the outside. So you can see that puff. See that puff? His eyeballs puff. There's puffs. His nose is puffed. His mouth is puffed. His body. Look at that puff. Up close, you can see it. Look at all that puff. And then the dog. Yes, I showed the swirly. And then I went around all this. In the video, I show you guys. So if you guys go watch that video, you don't have to leave right now to watch it, but whatever. And then, like I said, the quilting is not perfect on the back. Do you see that? Because I had tension issues and I was not looking underneath the quilt. Some of whoever ends up winning this is going to go, oh my God, that's not horrible at all. But you know what? It is to me. It really is bad. See? Can you see where I had to stitch over everything and I didn't bother plucking all those threads out because I'm lazy? But uh, you can see the original eyelashes. You know, just showing you guys, I'm not perfect. I tell you guys all the time, I'm not perfect. I just like to have fun and show you how to do things. So I struggle with things as well when it comes to quilting. So just know you're not the only ones. <laughs> Because I have the problems too. What are we at so far, Scotty? We's at 150. 155. Now it's at 155. Oops. Well, that's falling. I'm just going to hook that up like that for now. All right. I'm going to sew just these three pieces. <laughs> I said it adds to the webbing. See, that's what I was saying. Yeah, it, it adds to it. I just want to make sure that I'm 100% transparent with you guys about, you know, I struggle with problems too. You know, I I get lazy and I don't check the underneath the quilt, you know, because my bobbin, my bobbin case has been good this whole entire time, a whole entire quilt, and I load another quilt and it's different. So sometimes it happens, sometimes it stays nice, sometimes it doesn't. And then I get lazy and I don't want to look underneath and go, oh, man, darn it. I need to pick that. <laughs> On my client quilts, I always look underneath. Always. Always. Because I don't want to mess their stuff up. Because <laughs> it's not mine. But when it's my projects, I'm so lazy about quilting things. Like when I load a quilt, I don't leave four inches all the way around like I tell you guys to send me. I actually will put like two inches and if I know it'll fit on, you know, two inches on the top and the bottom, if I, if it doesn't fit and I make my backing too short, I have leaders that I can sew on, <laughs> but I'm really lazy about that. Like about checking and making sure everything is good on my own stuff. What's it at, Scotty? She's in Greenland. She's going to have to pay shipping. Yeah, she knows that. Okay. We're at 215, you said? Yeah. Is it slowed two. down? It's between two people. Oh, two people? Laura are... Jurgensen and the Greenland Quilter. They're going back. And forth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hope they're going in like dollar increments. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> like, I want this. <laughs> I don't know where to get this panel either. It was actually gifted to me. <laughs> And, and they, the person that gifted to me said, do as you wish with it. I don't care. So this is what I'm doing with it. So 
it's still going? Yeah. Who's at what? I think we gave up at 280. Who's at 280? Laura Jurgensen. Laura Jurgensen is at 280. Has it changed? No, I, I, think, I think we're good there. All right, so 280, Laura, Laura Lauren? What'd you Laura say? Laura Jurgensen. Laura Jurgensen. 280 yeah, for Laura Jurgensen going I once. I need a pattern. 280 for Laura Jurgensen twice and sold to Laura. That's what you said, right? Laura. I said yeah, it three times in a row. Right. Nope, here. All right. So don't forget, Laura, to send me an email. Let me know how you want to pay either by Zelle or um, uh, Zelle or PayPal. PayPal invoicing does have a small fee, by the way. <clears throat> Zell is completely free. So make sure you email me. That way I can go out into the mail this week. And I'm just going to leave Jack hanging there. I'm not going to worry about moving him. Okay, now I got it. But anyways, I was saying, I don't know where you guys could find the panel. Uh, for anybody that does want to do a Jack Skellington panel, I don't know where it's sold. It's been hanging in my closet for more than three years. It's been hanging in the closet since I've been in this room. Because it was given to me many years ago. <laughs> so, And I finally got around to it. So I'm not sure where it could be found. It's probably something you have to get online somehow. Huh? Oh, yeah, let me set one up. So they can have a consolation prize? Yep. I'll do this right here. All right, I got to set up. We're going to do a giveaway, but you're going to have to wait till I set it up. We're doing this, okay? I'm doing that. Huh? Oh. Oh. Well, I was going to run a giveaway in the background. Yeah, right now. Then we'll do another one later. Okay. This is giveaway, right? This one? Yeah. Yeah. You told me earlier you were going to look at all this stuff. Hold on to it. Oh. That's what you were talking about earlier. Okay. You were just telling me just earlier today, all that. Just random stuff is going to be giveaway stuff. Consolation prizes. Yeah. Everybody was bidding. There's uh, consolation prizes. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Things that I've made, things that I've made, and things that I didn't make that comes this way. Just random stuff. So let me get this started. It could be fabric. It could, it be, could be fabric. It could be those things. It could be whatever. I send random stuff for giveaways now. Um, if I can get it going. All right. Right there. All right. There is a giveaway running now, so type in explanation what is the word gift or enter i forgot it's gift. it's gift explanation gift so the explanation part gift all one together no spaces in between and that will enter you for united states residents and if you're entering from another country just know you'll have to pay your shipping sorry that we have to do that but again we've been shipping a, quite a few things out of the country lately and it's a pretty penny to ship out of the country. So if we're just giving something away, it might as well just be within the states so we don't have to fill out all the forms and stuff for something really little and one yard of fabric or whatever. Sorry about that. All right. 
getting close to having all these sewn. Got one more rose worth to sew together. And then I can start sewing the rows together. Which I'm highly anticipating because I really want to see if the colors are doing what I had hoped with the gradation across the row. I want rainbows. Called always chasing rainbows for a reason because they put rainbow fabric in it. <laughs> I'll have a chat in front of me so. I don't know if there's any questions and Scott stepped out of the room for a minute. <coughs> oh, I didn't have nothing to talk about because you stepped out of the room. And I didn't know if there was any questions or anything. Running too fast. Yeah. 600 people typing in something. I question you only need to type it once you get one ticket and some sometimes it says you get two tickets but it's just one ticket the thing says you get two so yeah. everybody gets two it's yeah. the same. Your name so everybody there. gets two tickets yeah. but everything else runs the same everybody that enters you only need to enter once yeah you only need to enter once Almost done with these. I'm going to start putting them together into a rose. Two more. Where do you come up with ideas for quilts? Uh, where do I come up with ideas for quilts? Well, my ideas come from life. So I could have walked into a building that has a tile floor in a certain way and I get an idea from that. Um, I did that four patch plus video recently. That came from me hating math. You know, it, it, I don't like math and it's a mathy quilt because one plus one in the quilting world, one plus one equals one and a half. One and a half plus one and a half equal two and a half. Two and a half and two and a half equal four and a half. It's a quilting trick math. <laughs> and then the whole entire time it be, creates a plus sign. And then the, the layout actually creates like an Irish chain too all at the same time. So that just came from the fact that I was just trying to goof around with numbers. That's where that pattern came from. Other times I see it in my sleep in a dream. Or I see it when I'm awake on a TV. Uh, just all sorts of stuff. Give me ideas. There's no one. Shelly says you should make it. If they don't give a thumbs up, you can't enter the drawing. <laughs> yeah, I would never know if somebody gave a thumbs up or not. Well, there's only 200 thumbs up. Oh, there's only on 200 thumbs up, 600 people. Yeah. I would never know who did or didn't, though. So I wouldn't be able to stop that one or control that, I guess, for giveaways. I can do it for only subscribers where you have to, have to, have to be subscribed. I think subscriber mode is on. Honestly, I think you have, to, chat, to, you have to be subscriber, Yeah, right? just to chat, you have to be a subscriber to my channel. 
And we did that on purpose to keep the bots out because we get those all the time. All right, we're going to pull up another auction is a table runner. It is a table runner going for auction. So it's going to start out at $10 because that's what they all start out at. Usually, unless it's a big quilt, which I haven't had a big, big one in a while to auction off. So. He's going to hang it up. All right. And I am going to start sewing these rows. Put it long so they know it's a table runner. Yes. Yeah, that's why I wanted to take it down so we could hang stuff like that. But. We ain't taking the flag down. All right. So now I'm going to hook these rows together. Just like this. All right. Yep. Just like this. So we're creating chevrons. So one of these will go press one way, and one will get pressed the other way. All right, then the next one. There we go. Somebody did twelve dollars. So that one is just stitched in the ditch around the tumbler blocks. That's it. And then the binding is the same. And the back is a red that matches. And all you see is the stitched in the ditch. It's a very simple uh, table runner that's like four, 15, 17, 17 inches by 44, I think. Let me do it. 43. 17 by 43. I think we're at 15. That's all 15. There's a 20. Okay, we're going the wrong direction. I gotta undo. I gotta pick. There's a 20. Gotta pick. I'm going the wrong direction here. I noticed my colors were in the wrong spot. Second one. I gotta lay this. What will be the finished size if they always chase the rainbows? The finished size is fifty-two by sixty-eight. Lay one of these out real quick because that one goes first and then that one's second. It's I said fifty two by sixty eight is what the that, this quote will be. So fifty two sixty eight is a lap. All right, I need to see what's going on here. So this comes from the bottom, I think. Then it goes. This way. Okay, well, I need to move this out of my way because I need to go kind of crooked here. <clears throat> Got to make sure that I'm getting these right. I think we're done at 31. We're at 31. 31 is pretty good. There. And then here. 
Aha. Okay. This is the order they go in. Okay. So I'm going to sell them. What are we at? Thirty-one dollars to who? Vicky Bush. Vicky Bush going once. Thirty-one going twice. Sold to Vicky Bush for hold thirty-one. On, hold on, hold on. What? I already said sold. Yeah, but I was writing. Oh well. Better than fine. We'll give it to her. The other lady came up with the thirty-seven. Oh well, it's gone now because I it was not seen or told me to beforehand. It was. You just don't wait. I tell you to wait till I'm done writing. Okay, then it goes to who? Make sure you email me to the Vicky, I guess it was. I don't remember because it's not in front of me. With how you would like to pay. All right, I'm gonna. Do you want to call the winners for the gift? Or yep. I'm gonna do it right after these three pieces are sewn. Came unthreaded again because I knocked it out. All I'm doing is just nesting these seams together. The whole way down, I press right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. It doesn't matter which way the, the connector seam goes because those are going to get pressed whatever way you want to press them since they are actually being hooked um, differently. They're, you know, the rows are being hooked with sashing in between them. All right, so here was my row one right here. And you can see that it gradiates in color. Look at that. So one turned out okay so far. So let's hope that two, three, and more turn out because it's supposed to go one, red down to purple, and then it's going to be red. So the next red is the next one, and it's supposed to go the opposite way. So I'll get that one hooked together, but let's draw... Um, some winners.
It's on. There's a light. It should be on. And plug this thing up here and replug it. They're all saying there's no sound. Oh, now they, Is now there they sound? Hear. Okay, now they can hear. We didn't turn it off. <laughs> it has a... Hmm. We didn't turn it off. It's, it's a UHF. Uh, my uh, microphone is a UHF, so it's hard to know. It has like you know channels, so if something interrupts it, it sometimes cuts out. It does that during my filming. When I'm filming something, it it starts making high pitch. I don't know. You guys have probably heard it in some of my videos. Oh, I can't stop. It has 14 minutes left. I don't know why it's not letting me. Well, it said it's already closed. Well, it doesn't hear. That's the problem. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll here wait it's still minutes, then we here it's it. still running. Oh, here we go. Pick winner, Teresa Louise. I quilt two. You are winner number uno, numero uno. Winner, Teresa Louise. You know how to get a hold of me. So, next winner. Let's pick another winner. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Terry McCauley. McCauley. I'm pretty sure that's how it's said. Terry McCauley, you are a winner. Please email me with your address so I know where to ship your prize. Again, it's just going to be something random, something I made. It could be a yard of fabric, two yards of fabric. It's just whatever. It could be some notions. And winner numero three is Dear, is that Dear Mom? Because it doesn't have the whole word here yeah, for me. Dear Mom. Yep, Dear Mom. Dear Mom, you are winner number three. Please shoot me an email to, with your address so that I can ship out your prize. Yeah, I also need Laura Jurgensen's email and Vicki Bush's email. And I need Laura Jurgensen's email, uh, email from Lori Jurgens, and what is the other one? Vicki Bush. Vicki Bush. All right, there's that. So that's done. Let's sew another row to see how this goes. All right. This one is going to go here now. Right, then purple, then that one, and that one. All right. Ooh, it's starting to look like it's doing like it's supposed to. It looks purty full, as that one lady said. Purty full? <laughs> yeah, it's purty full. All Let's... right, here we go. <laughs> Let's start sewing these together. Ah! No more. We're going to run one more auction. It's pretty long. Yeah, it, it's a really long table runner. It's That's what I was thinking. Should it go? This way. Yeah. It's I a really do, long table runner. It's going to start out at $10. If you guys watched my videos, you'll see that I just recently made this one. Um, Two so Sundays ago now. Yeah, two so Sundays ago. Scotty's going to tell me how big it is in a second. 15. 14. 14. Oh, 14. I thought that said 15 so from here. 14 by 55. 14 by 55. It is the one that looks like burners. I said it. If you guys haven't been watching my newest vlog, uh, that's what I made. <laughs> And quilted, and it looks like burners. Anyways, what's it at? 25. 25 so far. 30. It's at 30.
He's going to show the back of it. Vanna. He's doing a Vanna White. And said he's Scotty Bald. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so it's nice and fall like. Can you even see me on the screen or is it only looking up there? telling you guys when you cut your thread if you own the juki and you use your thread cutter that's built into your pedal um the thread tail gets knocked out if you start sewing too fast right away but if you start out slow you won't lose your thread tail just thought i would let you know that i keep forgetting to just not use it but it would probably save on maintenance with my machine if I would just, you know, pull it away and snip it. But then I have lots and lots of threads that I got to pick away later doing it that way. I used to do it that way on my old machine. Like, not this, on, not on my old Juki, but my old brother machine. I used to just pull it away because... I had to pull it away to use the st side snipper thing. All right, so the next row is sewn. You can see it goes in a color radiation That's look at awesome. that so the next row is going to start with whatever's after this one so yeah i'll just lay them all here so this next one i have to lay it out first though goes with the orange and red goes up here up there right Ended with the orange and it goes to red and purple, purple, blue, cool green. And that ends with orange, dark orange. All right, here we go. Let's sew this row. What are we at? 50. 50. We're at 50 so far. Huh? Fifty one, we're at fifty one. We're still going. <laughs> Do I hear fifty two? Fifty two, fifty two. Somebody wants it for the kitchen table so that they can put a bowl on every black circle for serving Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Because it's like a buffet table serving oh. thing. I literally 
I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, they're saying pies. Over. Pies on each one. <laughs> yep, put a different fa flavor pie on each one. And don't forget to take a picture and send it to me. <laughs> Whoever wins this. Everyone at 56. We're at 56. Scotty says that it's down to two, he thinks. He thinks. All right, so the next row is sewn. All going in the one direction. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that over there. We're going to sew the, lay this next one out. Applique. Have I ever tried applique? Yeah. Well, yeah, I've been doing applique since a long time ago. That was your question. Yes. I actually just did applique today. <laughs> I still have to do the sewing part of it, but. Like I said, I've been working all day today. I have been in here sewing. Yeah, okay. This goes, okay. I got this correct. All right, what are we at, Scotty? 60. Still between the same two ladies. Oh, it's still going between the same two ladies. It's at 60. Jonathan and Joyce. Go back and forth. Okay, so we're at 60 for who? Joyce. Joyce. 60 for Joyce going twice. Sold to Joyce for 60. Make sure you shoot me an email with which way you would like to pay via Zelle, which is free, or PayPal, which has got a small fee with the invoice. One more row to sew after this, and then next week we'll put all the sashing and all that on. Because I'm getting pooped since I've been working all day. I started off slow and it still came out of the hole. It doesn't do it with the big spools of thread. It's just weird how the little spools of thread like pull themselves back or whatever it's doing. That is annoying. That's for sure. Okay, so here's the next row. And then one more row to sew, and then they just need to be pressed. All right. Well, I'd be allowed to do that. Way. Yeah, you can start pressing them now. Oh, okay. Look at that. Please make sure when you press, yes. you press this way. Press all towards this one right here. Like this. Actually, no. Press it this way. No. This way, yeah. Well, you got to make your mind up. <laughs> Press it all towards that point. Don't take the clip off, though. I need that on there. you got to make your mind up. You're going to get me all confused. Okay. Oh, yay. Look at that. 
look at that. And this was yellow. At the sun, there is. Oh, and I'm on pressing them towards the point. Yes. Well, the yes, that's what you're doing. Yeah. That way. Right. Yeah, everything's gonna come this way towards me. Yeah. Yes. All going that way. Yep. Right. Making sure which way we're pressing everything because again, there's no pressing instructions yeah. for this, Look. so you just press whatever way. Yeah, it down. yeah. yeah. Right. yep, right. perfect. Okay, making sure that you press everything at least flat. You know, a lot of people press these open when they do units like this. Uh, I don't do that, but because to me it's pointless and when you get to the long arm and open seam i can't stitch in the ditch in because it actually does break them i've been telling it to my audience for a very long time if you send me a quilt don't ask for you know when you ask for your quilting on it don't ask for stitch in the ditch because if the seams are open it's going to fall apart and i've had it happen while on the long arm two times now Busted the seam right open as soon as I noticed. I was like, see, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, it just has to hit the thread just right. And then I have to go back and repair it with glue. And I know not everybody, not everybody really knows that I'm gluing your quilts, by the way. But, well, except my clients do. Because I tell them that, um... I use glue at the long arm quite often for open seams. All right. All right, row five. Done. Yep. Mm-hmm. Or auction is going to run and it is a wall hanging it's going to start off at 10 this one is the junkard's path that looks like a junkard's path and it's quilted to death it's heavily quilted in the black section not in the um, path part but this one is I don't know how big because again I did not Pre measure anything, and I don't know where the measuring thing went. It was on the table. Away already, because I thought we were done. That's All okay. right. Ow. Nice and fall themed. It is 25 by 28, and it does have hanging hooks on it, so that you can hang it on a rod. It has hanging hooks on it. Oh, I don't need to be. I just need to press faster. Okay, I think those two. Okay. All right, we're at 67 so far. I'm pressing real quick. I'm off camera because I'm a little bit faster than Scotty when it comes to this. A little bit? You're a whole lot. You're <laughs> faster than anyone at ironing, probably. Yeah, I... I'm super fast at this. Yeah, we're at 75. I'm going to show him the back. We're at 75. He's going to vanna the back for you guys so that you can see it creates the path, the drunkard's path. Some people, though, on the video last week said it looked like um, bats. Oh, my, it does. Since it looks like bats, 
it's great for fall, which is Halloween. That's is in like fall. Bats. I did not know that. Yeah, it looks like bats. All right. One row pressed. All right, I'm just going to keep pressing. What are we at? 90. We're at 90 so far. Oh, it's already going up. So, no, just take it down and bring it close to the camera. That way we don't have to keep moving the camera. Yeah. Yeah, Scotty's going to move it so that you guys can see. They're getting 100 bucks on something. You want to know what you get? Yeah. I would, anyway. I mean, we're at 110 now. It's at 110. I had fun quilting that one. That's for sure. glad I got up to press because I can actually um, stretch while I'm doing it. All that sitting today. So much sitting. All right, row two. Oh, this is row five. What row was this? Four. This one actually goes on top of this one. I don't know how they got... I don't know how they got backwards. It's at 110. Scotty's Vanna Whiting it for you still. Oh, wait. Oh, that didn't work. This. Clips are yes, they are. Cheesy clips. Kind of cheesy. They're from the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree or whatever, I remember. Yeah. Or 99 cents store. Get the store. job done. And then they cost. You work. All right, three is now pressed. All right, I think 110 has it. 110 to who? Uh, Susan Gabriel. Susan 110 going once to Susan Gabriel 110 going twice. Sold to Susan Gabriel for 110. Look at that. All right. Hopefully you guys are getting up and stretching while I'm pressing. I have one more row after this row to press. Oh, and Susan, don't forget to email me after this video and let me know Zelle or PayPal. Obviously, I respond as soon as I possibly can. So that way we're not up super late. All right. And one more row.
By the way, have I told you guys out there that I love this wool pressing mat? And I really, really, really wish they made a humongous one to fit my ironing board. <laughs> because this little thing is uh, kind of small and hard to press along and stuff. It's a definitely a nice little, I'm glad I bought it. <laughs> I just wish that they, I know they make bigger ones, but not as big as my actual ironing board. I like things. My ironing board is a specific height, so. All right. I'm going to hang my rows up now. They mostly do make the 75 inches. They do? They make a 75-inch wool pressing mat? Yeah, one lady said they make it as big as you want, even today. Oh. What size is ours? Here, put this with this, all the rest of everything they, for today. Uh, one lady asked, is there a signature patch on the wall hanging? Uh, no, actually, I did not put a signature on any of the wall hangings or table runners. If you want me to sign it, sign it, I will sign it with actual uh, fabric marker. All right, I'm gonna put these up here on a, these next to each other so you guys can get the general idea of what this is gonna look like. So that one goes this way and then this one goes this way. I'm hoping my idea turned out. And this one goes down. All right. Yep. Yeah, if you want something signed, just put it in the email that you want it signed so I know before I pack it up. All right, guys, here's what it's going to look like. It's going to have sashing in between each one of these. But as you can see, my idea behind the rainbow actually worked the way I had hoped. So Marvel Mat is a foot by 17 and three quarters. A foot by 17 and three quarters is how big my wool mat is. So I'm just going to lift it up so you guys can see. Obviously, the things are falling in because it's fabric, but my gradiating idea worked. Yay! So it's next week when we come back for So Sunday of next week. We'll work on the sashing and the borders, um, which the borders are. Uh, this, it's got sashing between each one of these, and then it has a sashing or border on both sides of the outside. And then the top and bottom have pieced with cornerstones. Now I'm going to change things up because I, I think it needs to be bigger and have more um, flair. So all that extra fabric you guys remember from last Sunday, look how much extra fabric there is. Every single piece is this big of all the colors. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this all into um, so what I'll do is like, if right there is red section, I'm going to go with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and I'm going to cut out uh, four and a half inch squares and just go down four and a half inch squares and then go across the top and the bottom with the same color. So across the top is going to be red, orange, and then down that side will be the orange, yellow, green, all the way down to the bottom, and then the bottom will have Thing. So I'm going to cut four and a half inch squares. I should be able to get enough four and a half inch squares from every single one of these to be able to go all the way around. The sashing is the white batik. So it's going to have the sashing. I'm not sure if I should forego on these two and a half inch squares on the pattern for the corner stones or sashing stones. Um, so these stones right here across the top. I might forgo that, honestly, and actually just because 
I do have some triangles that I can cut, but I honestly think that I'm just going to keep that solid of the white. So you can do the pattern by the pattern, but you know, do the pattern by the way the pattern is written, or you can do what I'm doing and change things up, which is what I love to do. And I think I'm going to forego on those things because they only have you using two colors on that anyway. So I'm going to just cut four and a half inch squares from the rest of all this, the whole entire thing. I'm just going to cut into as many four and a half inch squares as I can get. And then I will go around the whole thing. I'll do the sashing in between and around the whole thing with the white. And then do the four and a half inch squares all the way around. And then in the four corners, there'll be four corners left behind. Those I'll do probably in white. That way it's floating. And then, yeah. There should be plenty of white fabric to do that with what came with my kit. Um, I'm not adding any extra yardage. I'm actually removing points for the rest of this fabric. So, yeah, I think that'll work out perfectly. Perfectly. So next week we'll do that. We'll work on putting the rows together and cutting out. I'm going to pre-cut all this into four and a half inch squares off camera. So by next week, it'll already be ready to build those borders and change things up, make it Tiffany's way. <laughs> All right. I love it so far. And it's not even together. I just love how it created the red, the orange. Not only is it going, you know, diagonally, but it's going up and down. I like that. I like it a lot. All right. Where are we at? We got five minutes left. Any questions? questions that I can answer. <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I think it'll be really pretty. I like the idea of taking the squares all the way around instead. Yep. I think it'll look really awesome. Plus, I like rainbow, everything rainbow. So, all righty. No questions? Do we have a quiet crowd tonight, Scotty? <laughs> I don't know. All right, everybody. Well, if there's nothing for me to answer or respond to, then I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Them now's the time they can ask all the questions about machines and stuff because you have like seven more minutes. Yeah, all you guys, stuff. if you want to ask questions about machines or anything that you yeah, guys want to ask about, about threads going on the I schools use earlier the most whatever. commonly asked question is what machine are you using? That is the number one question I get asked on every single video. I use a Juki TL 2010Q. That is my go-to everyday sewing machine. I am a Juki girl, so I own not one, not two, but three Juki machines. I have a DU1181N Industrial, and then I have a Juki HZL F600 that has all the decorative stitches that I'm going to be using to do some more applique that I need to finish doing. And then I do own two brother machines, are three brother machines. I have a brother embroidery machine, a brother uh, that which is a PRS 100, and then I own a brother serger. Don't ask me the numbers on it because I totally forgot. And a brother SQ9285. And then the only other machine I own is a King Quilter 2 Elite, which is my long arm. All right. Carol asking about something. How is he? Thumper is good. He's somewhere in this house. Yeah, okay. oh, we don't, know. We don't we even know. know. He's somewhere around here. His new favorite hiding spot, though, is... So I have two dresser units that have all my threads in it to keep Thumper hair off of it and to just to keep my threads in a drawer so they don't get dusty because we live in Arizona and it gets really dusty here. Those two units sit next to each other under the back side of the long arm, and I had put practice pieces like you know the samples with batting and batting and so on you know all that those were folded under there and he kept going under there so finally we just picked up his quilt that used to lay on the floor behind the long arm and we actually put it up on those two dresser units and so he just jumps up there and he lays up there all the time and we're like when we can't find him that's where he is he's under the long arm uh, and he he'll stay there while I'm quilting too or blasting the music while quilting he likes being under there so that's where he is being lazy. What kind of extension table can I use on a brother machine? <coughs> on a what machine? On my brother machine. A 
Uh, you would have to look up your machine model number and then see what kind of extension table it has to go with it. My Juki, this one, came with the extension table. My HZLF600 came with an extension table. My brother SQ9285 came with an extension table. Even my embroidery machine has an extension quilting table. So every single machine makes an extension table. I'm not, I'm not sure about sergers, but... 90% of the machines. They also have insert desks that have the actual insert built in for all sorts of different style machines. So if you want a koala table, they have them for that fit Bernina's. They have them that fit, you know, Husqvarna's. They have them that fit the brother machines, the Juki machines, you name it. They have the section that fits it with the actual glass part that goes on it for that machine. Or would she look at mine? <coughs> You could check Sewing Machines Plus. Um, I have an affiliate link with that. Yeah, okay. And then you could also probably check, um, honestly, I would Google it and just press shopping under Google and see. But you would want to look up through a company first and see what they even sell. Because I don't know, you know, what machines have what. What's your turnaround time for? <clears throat> Long arm quilting right now is at three and a half weeks. And and it also depends on what you want done. If you want custom quilting, it's going to take a little bit longer. But other than that, I'm at three and a half weeks out. So that's not bad. And everything I do on the long arm, for those of you that want long arm quilting by me and the ones that, you know, th there's people here that send them in to me, they could tell you. Uh, everything I do is not computerized. It's all manual free motion. So if it looks like a computer did it when you get it back and you're like, Thinking to yourself and pondering. No, that's me. That's my work. So, and I mainly do edge to edge because I know like a hunt over a hundred computer designs in my head. They're my computer right here and I can stitch them out. So, and this week you'll have videos to see. Are you so, going to do any more embroidery videos? Uh, well, we put that uh, embroidery turtle. of the turtle time lapse on there just to see. Uh, if I feel like embroidering something, I can put more embroidery videos. That's if you guys want to see them. Look, here, <coughs> I'm going to give you a rundown real quick about my channel. And maybe you guys can give your input in the comments after the fact. But long arm quilting videos do not, absolutely do not do good on my channel at all. Showing you guys how to long arm quilt has drug my channel down all these years. I lose lots of subscribers per videos the videos don't even barely make any money like literally like that video could be on for two years and it barely made fifteen dollars seriously those videos do not get watched they get more thumbs down than anything and the comments are usually bad like oh well why can't you do this and why can't you do that so those have always been the horriblest on my channel so i pulled those i'm still putting some in but I'm changing the format. So little by little, you guys will still see long arm videos for those that love watching them, but the format has now changed. Secondarily to that, I started a long arm quilting vlog. That didn't go over very well either. I got like six or eight weeks in and it wasn't doing anything. You guys out there must not like them. So I decided to change that and do an actual week in review vlog. Now, I don't have a lot done in a week, so it might might end up being bi-weekly or, you know, however many times a month I can actually get one out, but it eventually hopefully lead to weekly. So I changed it to an everything. So no matter what I'm working on, whether it's long arm quilting or I'm actually piecing a quilt or I'm just telling you the story about it, that's that new format. So X nay on the long arm related anything more geared towards piecing and quilting all together in a whole. <coughs> what else did I change on my channel? I changed something else. Oh, uh, anytime I make a pattern, a verbal visual pattern, that's my own pattern. I don't always do those monthly. Sometimes they're every other month. So those will always still continue but when I make those videos. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to see, if you really want to see an embroidery, which we threw it on as a test just to see, it really didn't perform that great. Uh, I'll do those. And if 
you know, if there's other little things, maybe you guys can email me as a suggestion. I've been getting lots of emails saying they love that you guys are loving my how to videos that I started. So how to make quilt back and how to do this and how to do that I've done so far. Those are getting attention. So if you guys like those, those are going to stay for now until I see otherwise in the analytics. But we're x naying on long arm quilting, just watching it with music kind of thing and gearing it more towards teaching it, hopefully a little bit better than the original video. So um, there's that. So hopefully you guys, if you have any suggestions, again, email me and let me know because I do my best, you know, if there's something you need to see, maybe you want, you know, my favorite notions or my favorite this or, you know, whatever, I can do a video on that and see how that goes. So I take suggestions in my email. <laughs> All right, I'm done talking. I'm starting to get <clears throat> like a cough from talking too much. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for hanging out. We will be back next week with part three of the Always Chasing Rainbows, putting it together. And then this quilt series will be done and on to another So Sunday's worth of something fun. So anyways, I'll see you guys next Sunday. Tell them yes, the videos are not deleted so they can watch all the old videos. Yes, I don't delete videos. They're all still there. You can watch all of them that you want, but they're never deleted. There's some that got deleted, but that's because the horrible quality of video. They were so bad. I was like, why is this even on here? So yes, all my videos stay. All right, guys. Love y'all. Take care and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.